Tom Swift and his motorcycle by Victor Appleton. Chapter 17 Mr. Swift in Despair Tom was thinking of many things as his speedy machine carried him mile after mile nearer home. By noon he was over halfway on his journey, and he stopped in a small village for his dinner. I think I'll make inquiries of the police here to see if they caught sight of those men, decided Tom as he left the restaurant, though I am inclined to believe they kept on to Albany or some large city where they have their headquarters. They will want to make use of Dad's model as soon as possible, though what they will do with it I don't know. He tried to telephone to his father, but could get no connection as the wire was being repaired. The police force of the place where Tom had stopped for lunch was like the town itself, small and not of much consequence. The chief constable, for he was not what one could call a chief of police, had heard of the matter from the alarm sent out in all directions from Dunkirk, where Mr. Blackford lived. "'You don't mean to tell me you're the young man who was chloroformed and robbed?' exclaimed the constable, looking at Tom as if he doubted his word. "'I'm the young man,' declared our hero. "'Have you seen anything of the thieves?' "'Not a thing, though I've instructed all my men to keep a sharp lookout for a red automobile. With three scoundrels in it, my men are to make an arrest on sight. "'How many men have you?' Two, was the rather surprising answer but one has to work on a farm daytime, so I ain't really got but one in what you might call active service. Tom restrained a desire to laugh. At any rate, the aged constable meant well. One of my men seen a red automobile a little while before you came in my office, went on the official, but it wasn't the one wanted, because a young woman was running it all alone. Struck me as rather curious that a woman would trust herself all alone in one of them things, wouldn't it you? Oh, no, women and young ladies often operate them, said Tom. I should think you'd find one handier than the two-wheeled apparatus you have out there, went on the constable, indicating the motorcycle which Tom had stood up against a tree. I may have one some day, replied the young inventor, but I guess I'll be moving on now. Here's my address in case you hear anything of those men, but I don't imagine you will. Me either. Fellows as slick as them aren't want to come back this way and run the chance of being arrested by my man. I have two on-duty nights, he went on proudly, besides myself. So, you see, we're pretty well protected. Tom thanked him for the trouble he had taken, and was soon on his way again. He swept on along the quiet country roads, anxious for the time when he could consult with his father over what would be the best course to take. When Tom was about a mile away from his house, he saw on the road ahead of him a rickety old wagon, and a second glance at it told him the outfit belonged to Eradicate Sampson, for the animal drawing the vehicle was none other than the mule Boomerang. But what in the world is Rat up to? mused Tom, for the man was out of the wagon and was going up and down in the grass at the side of the highway in a curious fashion. I guess he's lost something, decided Tom. When he got nearer, he saw what Eradicate was doing. The man was pushing a lawnmower slowly to and fro in the tall, rank grass that grew beside the thoroughfare, and at the sound of Tom's motorcycle, the man looked up. There was such a woe-begone expression on his face that Tom at once stopped his machine and got off. "'What's the matter, Rad?' Tom asked. "'Matter, Mr. Swift? Why, there's a powerful lot to matter, and that's the turf.' I've been swindled, that's what I has. Swindled how? Well, it's dis away. You see dis ye lawnmower? Yes, it doesn't seem to work, and Tom glanced critically at it. As Eradicate pushed it slowly to and fro, the blades did not revolve, and the wheel slipped along on the grass. No, sir, it don't work, and that's how I've been swindled, Mr. Swift, you see. I done traded my old grindstone off for dis ye lawnmower and I got stuck. What? That old grindstone was broken in two, and that you fastened together with concrete, asked Tom, for he had seen the outfit with which Eradicate in spare times between cleaning and whitewashing had gone about the country sharpening knives and scissors. You don't mean that old broken one? 
That's what I mean, Mr. Swift. Why, it was all right. I mended it so that it de break wouldn't show, and it would sharpen things if you ran it slow. But this yer lawnmower won't work slow nor fast. I guess it was an even exchange then, went on Tom. You didn't get bitten any worse than that other fellow did. Yo, don't suppose you can fix this yer mower so I can use it, does you, Mr. Swift? asked Eradicate, not bothering to go into the ethics of the matter. I reckon now, with summer coming on, I can make more with a lawn mower than I can with a grindstone. That is, if I can get it to work. I just got it a while ago and decided to try it, but it won't cut no grass. I haven't much time, said Tom, for I'm anxious to get home, but I'll take a look at it. Tom leaned his motorcycle against the fence. He could no more pass a bit of broken machinery, which he thought he could mend, than some men and boys can pass by a baseball game without stopping to watch it, no matter how pressed they are for time. It was Tom's hobby, and he delighted in nothing so much as tinkering with machines, from lawnmowers to steam engines. Tom took hold of the handle, which Eradicate gladly relinquished to him, and his train touch told him at once what was the trouble. Someone has had the wheels off and put them on wrong, Rad, he said. The ratchet and Paul are reversed. This mower would work backwards, if that were possible. Am that so, Mr. Swift? That's it. All I have to do is take off the wheels and reverse the Paul. I, I didn't know my lawnmower was named Paul, said the man. Is it writ on it anywhere? No, it's not the kind of Paul you mean, said Tom with a laugh. It's spelled differently. A Paul is a sort of catch that fits into a ratchet wheel and pushes it around. Or it may be used as a catch to prevent the backward motion of a windlass or the wheel on a derrick. I'll have it fixed in a jiffy for you. Tom worked rapidly. With a monkey wrench, he removed the two big wheels of the lawnmower and reversed the pawl in the cogs. In five minutes, he had replaced the wheels and the machine, except for needed sharpening, did good work. There you are, Rad, exclaimed Tom at length. You sure am a wonder at inventin', cried the man gratefully. I'll cut your grass all summer for you. You'll pay for this, Mr. Swift. Oh, that's too much. I didn't do a great deal, Rad. Well, you saved me from being swindled, Mr. Swift and I sure does appreciate that. How about the fellow you traded the cracked grindstone to, Rad? Oh, well, if he done run it slow, it won't fly apart, and he'll do that anyhow, for he show him a lazy man. I guess we am about even here, Mr. Swift. All right, spoke Tom with a laugh. Sharpen it up, Rad, and start in to cut grass. It will soon be summer. And Tom, leaping up on his motorcycle, was off like a shot. He found his father in his library reading a book on scientific matters. Mr. Swift looked up in surprise at seeing his son. What, back so soon? he asked. You did make a flying trip. Did you give the model and papers to Mr. Crawford? No, Dad, I was robbed yesterday. Those scoundrels got ahead of us. After all, they have your model. I tried to telephone to you, but the wires were down or something. What? cried Mr. Swift. Oh, dear. Tom, that's too bad. I will lose ten thousand dollars if I can't get that model and those papers back. And with a despairing gesture, Mr. Swift rose and began to pace the floor.